Hi everyone, it's Bruns here and welcome back to another video. Today we are talking about the monk on Castle Morihisa and how you can make the most out of your deck when playing him. I'll be sharing with you my top 5 cards to have on your deck in no particular order of preference. And make sure you stick until the end of this video for the bonus cards. The monk is a balanced character with both good defensive and offensive skills. However, it's when you take those to the extreme that you will really see the monk shine. One of the monk's main abilities is meditation, which gives you one armor on your next turn. Upon reaching 5 meditation, you enter avatar state, and whilst you're on avatar state, you can't gain any more meditation, but all your cards are one action point cheaper. Another unique and very powerful ability that can very quickly escalate is counter, which means you can counter attack your enemies whenever you are attacked. That can mean attacking all of your enemies at the same time if they're all attacking you, which can be devastating. The monk can also excel at healing, and if he can heal, then he can start using cards that will drain his health in order to gain strength bonuses. So without further ado, let's go through the top 5 cards to have in your deck when playing the monk. But remember that the monk has abilities that I'm not covering on this video, so there are other ways to playing him. This is just my opinion and what has worked for me, especially in the first few hours of the game. I would love to hear your opinions and what has worked for you, so make sure you drop a comment below and let me know. Card number 1. Unanger. With this card, you gain 3 armor and 1 meditation at a cost of 1 action point, and the upgraded version of this card will give you 5 armor plus 1 meditation. Needless to say, this should be one of the very first cards to start replacing your basic defense cards. We already spoke about how meditation can trigger the avatar state, lowering the cost of all cards. Couple that with the talent to the death, which will always give you a new card if your hand is empty, or with the fallen hero Kurodo Yoshitaka, which will get you to draw cards until your hand is full, and suddenly you have a beast of a monk who can infinitely block or attack. So if you see an anger, take it. Card number 2, Zen State. This card will give you 1 meditation at the cost of 0 action points, so it's really a no-brainer. When upgraded, this card gains Foresight, which means you start with it in your hand at the start of a battle. It's another card that won't hurt to have multiples of. Playing 2 or 3 Zen State cards on one turn can turn the battle and really give you that advantage you need to defeat your enemies. And did I say this card is free to use? Card number 3, Eternal Suffering. Right, so this is where the monk starts getting aggressive whilst being defensive. When you play this card, each defense card playing grants you one counter and it costs one action point. However, the upgraded version of it has a cost of zero, so another free card. It will go into the void after use, so you might want to hold off until you have at least more than one defense card to play in your hand before you use it. But this card can be a good skill card to use even when enemies are not attacking and you suddenly find yourself with several defense cards in your hand. The counter will stack and it will never go away, and that combined with other cards that can boost counter can really be decisive in a battle. Card number 4, Nature Zen. This is definitely one of my favorite cards as it will heal the monk for 1 health whenever he gains meditation. And now you can see the other value of meditation. This is a tactics card and it costs 2 action points. The upgraded version heals the monk for 2 health, so once you use it and then drop an anger cards upgraded, suddenly you find yourself offsetting enemy attacks by 7 points before it hits your health. Couple this with Zen State and you have a monk that ends a battle with more health than he had before the battle started. And not to mention that if you are on Avatar State, all these Unanger cards will be free. Card number 5, Enlightenment. This card will deal 4 damage and 1 mantra for the total amount of action points you have left. This can be a situational card, but it can also have devastating effects if played right, and I would definitely recommend having it on your deck. If you use cards or talents that can boost your strength and action points, then suddenly Enlightenment can become your go-to card at the start of a turn. Upgraded, it will deal 6 base damage times your action points, and I have had games where I was dealing 16 damage times 4. It's a beast of a card, take it. The only thing is, it will use all your action points in a turn, so it might be the only card you use then. And these were my top 5 cards whenever I'm playing the Monk, and I did promise you some bonus cards that I will slip into my deck if I have enough spaces, because we want to make sure our deck is quite thin, so that we're triggering those meditations, healing and counters as often as possible. Asura. If you're gaining health like crazy, then you can start using the extra health to gain 2 strength. This is the kind of card that becomes useful in the late game if you're using the healing build. However, I wouldn't recommend it in the early game. It has a cost of 0 and if you upgrade it, it will give you 3 strength instead of 2. If you play this 2 or 3 times in a battle, it will massively boost your attack and it can make winning fights a breeze. Light Forged. This card has a high cost of 3 action points, but it can really get you out of some sticky situations. Whilst this might be the only card you play in a turn, it will provide you with 2 advantages, 8 defense and 3 counter. Upgrade it, it will give you 12 defense and 3 counter, and as you know, counter can only stack. It will go into the void once you play it, so play it wisely. Divine Vajra. 
This is a really good card for the early game or if you're totally new to the game as it can give you a flavor of all the attack cards the monk has. It adds an extra temporary card on your hand at the start of every turn and temporary means that the card will simply vanish at the end of your turn rather than going to the graveyard or void. It can get you thinking of the synergies and the potential some of these have. When I see this card early in the game I definitely take it as it only costs one action point. Ethereal Shell this card is always on my deck, and although it is not on my top 5 of essential cards, I would highly recommend it. It has a cost of 2 action points, it will give you 3 armor, and it will make you ethereal, which means you will only lose 1 health when taking damage. Once upgraded, it will cost 1 action point, but it will still go into your void stack, so having something to combo with void will add an extra benefit to playing this card. And these were my top 5 and bonus cards for the monk deck, more directed at a healing and counter build, but it has the flexibility of also building some strength combos when combined with talents and other cards. Let me know what your favorite cards are down in the comments and if you stuck to the end of this video please like and subscribe as that helps us grow the channel so that I can continue to make videos like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time for more Castle Mori Hissa tips.